All right, guys, so this is a little presentation I threw together called Sin City Secrets, Million Dollar Mentoring by Profit Pimp, my alter ego. Um, and in this presentation, what I want to do is kind of talk about some of the things that I think have been most impactful in uh, my own business, as well as Dan's. We're pretty much 50-50 partners on everything we do these days. So in making that jump from six to seven figures, um, and so I say killing your day job is cool. That's obviously why you get into this program, but becoming a millionaire is way cooler. You know, it's, it's better for your family. It uh, lets you do more in terms of giving back to the community. The more money you make, the more free time you have, um, the more you can dedicate your life to the passions and the causes that, that fulfill you. So take it from the McDonald's dude. So Ray Kroc, I shared this quote a while back, um, but I, I love this quote, and this is kind of like the cornerstone of my entire business, I feel like. He says, creativity is overrated. Most business success comes from doing boring, diligent work, from developing a system that produces consistent results and sticking to it. And inside a job killing, go ahead and hit next slide, dude. Um, inside a job killing, you know, you guys have, have the system but it's really the thoughts and habits that are gonna take you, you know, from stock to five, 10K a month and beyond that. My parents, big inspiration. I kind of have an unfair advantage, I feel like, because um, although they were very employee-minded, um, they definitely taught me the value of hard work. My dad was always pushing me and saying, you know, take the snow shoveling job at the bank, take the detasseling job, take the uh, mowing and trimming job at the school. So. I come from a very much blue collar background, you know, eight, nine, 10 hour days, all summer long, mowing, trimming, um, bailing hay, doing that Midwest type of grunt work. And so I really appreciate, you know, what the internet gives us in terms of the hardest thing that we do, like writing articles and doing these things is not that bad compared to meat packing plants that I've worked at and shoveling snow at 5 a.m. and um, <laughs> walking through corn rows and getting sunburnt and chafed and eaten up by insects. Go ahead, next slide. So what this is about is the bridge from broke to becoming a boss. And like I said, you guys have got the system, job killing. We've seen hundreds of success stories. Many of you have supplied most of those success stories. And so the process works and we need to focus on stop looking for other shiny things out there. Um, get away from that internet marketer um, itch to, you know, consume all, purchase all these tools and software and training and, and business opportunities and just focus. We have the system, so let's focus on, like I said, the thoughts we think and the habits we form. So rule number one, and in fact, I just read another book called um, Brain Rules by John Medina, and there's 12 brain rules on kind of how the brain works and how to understand it better and make better use out of this brain of ours. And one of the things he said was that um, pictures and linking new, new pieces of, inf of information to other senses, um, so movies, I don't know if you guys, any dumb comedy fans in here? Zoolander, yes, one of the best. Blue Steel. Yeah, Blue Steel. Um, so this one I call the Zoolander Zag, right? And I don't know if you remember this part in the movie, but um, what? Yeah, you can demonstrate. <laughs> Uh, ben Stiller's character is walking home. He's kind of confused about who he is, where his life's going, and he looks into a puddle and sees this reflection. And he's like, who am I? And of course, being the dumb comedy, the reflection talks back to him, and he's like, I don't know. And so the point here and what I want you guys to remember is don't be the Derek Zoolander of your lead gen business. You have to know who you are. So Hansel, which was kind of his arch nemesis, he was the model who was kind of taking the throne and he was hot in this movie and Ben Stiller's model was kind of dying off. Um, he was very confident in who he was, right? And he understood um, where he was going with his, with his modeling career. And so from Peter Drucker's Managing Oneself, the first thing that we have to do to understand who we are, and it all starts with this, because if you don't understand who you are, how you learn, how you perform, it's very tough to go out there and get big results with this business. So the first step is to use feedback analysis. And this is nothing more than looking back on everything you've done in terms of business and seeing where have you been successful and where have you failed. And for me, of course, and I'll talk about this in the next slide, but 
I've tried so many different things to, to make money online. You know, I've tried paid advertising, I've tried flipping websites, um, I've done social media, but every successful project I've ever done stems from blogging. Like that's my foundation, bar none. So I'm a content guy, obviously. So you have to look back on what you've been successful with and use this to, if there's parts of the job killing process that you guys just historically you put off, you'll do anything to dodge and it, it keeps you back, then you gotta learn to partner up or barter or outsource because there's no sense in, in you know, uh, sinking into this quick stand and not moving forward simply because that's not part of your uh, signature strength. So the next thing to know, are you a reader or a listener, okay? As we go through job killing, as we read books and get smarter and better entrepreneurs, we need to know how we consume information best, how, how we commit that information to memory. Um, some people learn by, Dan learns by talking. So he calls me on the phone. I didn't even know that was a thing, but literally some people just need to hear themselves talk <laughs> to, to, to get excited, to learn new things and to commit new ideas to their memory. And that's how Dan is. I'm, I'm a note taker. Like I don't remember anything unless I take notes on what I'm reading, what I'm learning. So you have to know how you learn. It's important to continuous to commit to continuous learning. Um, next thing, are you social or are you a loner? I'm a loner, I like sitting in my basement, no distractions, locking the door and blogging. You know, shut my phone off, staying off social media. That's who I am, that's how I perform the best. I don't do well if I come to my office in the morning and get on Facebook, it just throws off my entire day. Um, Dan is extremely social. So how you can use this is like decide how you want to form your job killing business. You know, do you want this to be a one man or one woman show? Or do you want to have a team? Do you want to have one partner, three, four, five partners? Do you want to have a bunch of employees, a bunch of outsourcers, or do you just want to kind of bang it all out yourself? I prefer, I'm kind of a control freak. I like to do everything myself. Dan, very social. He likes to have a team. He likes to have um, a group of people around. To, he, he feeds off that. So what's important then if you do partner up, you have to understand each other. And so like I tell Dan, I'm like, dude, don't call me till at least 11 a.m. because I'm going to be doing my content in the morning and if you do, you're gonna throw off my whole schedule. So um, that's another thing. Next, are you a decision maker or an advisor? I hate making decisions. And the, you have to be honest as you assess yourself and you answer these questions. Um, even if you don't like the answers, you gotta be honest because this is, like, this is how you bridge that gap from broke, frustrated to you know, potentially millionaire someday. Um, I don't like making decisions. It's good that I'm partnered with Dan because he's very good at making decisions. He's very sure of himself. So, um, do you work best under a lot of stress and, stress and chaos or do you need structure? I need structure. Dan's kind of likes a lot of things being thrown his way. Um, do you want a large or small company? Like I said, what are your values? What do you want to contribute? And you know, does your business ultimately pass the mirror test? Are you proud of the lead generation sites that you're cranking out each and every day? So, Going through this, and if you guys haven't yet, you should check out that book, Managing Oneself, but you have to know yourself and you gotta do you. Don't try to change yourself. It takes far more energy, uh, money, and resources to go from subpar to sort of mediocre or slightly above average than it does to go from average to first-rate performance, right? That's what Peter Drucker says in Managing Oneself. Um, like I said, once I went through this book and asked myself all these questions, thought realistically about the answers, I'm a blue collar blogger. Like everything I've done to be successful, my foundation is content. And what I mean by blue collar is that whole, like the way I was raised, I'm kind of a volume guy, right? There's people who write a really great blog post and they do like one of those a month and they kind of find other ways to, to network and drive traffic to that content. I like, I like killing the competition with volume, right? So I like just being a workhorse and that's how I perform best. Um, I need to read it to understand it. I don't do well like on our live calls when people ask questions. I have a horrible like ability to listen to questions and like dissect what the real intent of the question is and then give an articulate answer. I need to kind of read it. I learn by taking notes. Um, definitely prefer working by myself. Horrible at making decisions. Need structure in my work environment. Um, prefer to have kind of a small business. I feel like everything's great just with myself and Dan and the few critical team members that we have. 
And um, one of the things that was important to me and kind of why I got out of the affiliate marketing slash MLM space is, you know, I wanted to feel really good about what I was doing and I wanted it to be where every time a transaction took place where I received money, I felt like the customer, the client was winning even more so than I was. Um, and I think this model that we teach is exactly that. I think it's the best online business model. I think it's the most doable, the most practical, the most sustainable. It makes the most sense. And it's going to be here for the rest of our lives. It's something that you can um, keep in the family and pass down to your kids. That was important to me as well. So rule number two, I call this one the presidential promise. And, you know, the, the thing to think about is like, have you ever seen uh, a presidential candidate run for office and be pessimistic. Like, you know, if you guys vote for me, you know, the next four years, it's not looking too good. Um, probably start a few new wars. Uh, unemployment rate will definitely go up. Minimum wage is going to go down. Taxes are going to go up for everyone, but I'd really appreciate your vote. That would, that would be horrible, right? That wouldn't work. But yet most of us laptop entrepreneurs, a lot of times we approach our... Vi we, we think about and approach our business very pessimistically, right? And so we have to learn to acknowledge that negative self-talk and get, get past it. So thinking, and I just read an, another book called Learned Optimism by Martin Seligman. You guys should definitely check that one out. It's a really short read. The audiobook's like an hour and a half. But um, basically he says, the way you think is a habit. And as we know, habits can be formed. They can also be broken. So if you have a tendency like me to think pessimistically about everything, you can actually retrain yourself to become more optimistic and get more done and break through barriers in your business. So some of the defining characteristics of optimist versus pessimist, and I thought this was interesting because I thought that I was you know, slightly pessimistic on certain things, but fairly optimistic on others. But as I as I went through this book, I realized that I was actually pretty pessimistic across the board. So optimists believe that any adversity that they face is temporary, right? It's only going to last a short amount of time. Um, they also believe that it's not their fault. Um, they believe that they have control over their destiny. So if life throws them a curveball, they feel like they can do something themselves to get around that adversity. Um, they believe that the causes of the adversity are limited. And in general, they have healthier, happier, more, more successful lives. Um, pessimists, on the other hand, believe that um, adversity is, is going to be here forever. Like, it's never going to go away. They tend to, even if it's not their fault, they place blame on themselves. Um, they feel helpless, like they have no control over their circumstances. And because of that, they give up very easy. And they tend to get depressed and get into funks, and that holds them back in life and in business. So uh, Kanye West is someone who I, I like studying, and I call it Kanye's fascinating fantasy long, fantasy land, excuse me. And um, Kanye West, as a as a performer, as an artist, and Conor McGregor as a UFC fighter, these are two guys that I study for their mindset because. It's so phenomenal how these guys think. They're, they're very much visionaries. Um, they compare themselves to God and Steve Jobs and all of these like, amazing figures throughout history. And on one hand, yes, it's kind of conceited. And you know, I don't think any of us would really want to be like that outwardly. Um, but in terms of the way you think, I think that all of us could use a little bit more of this in our life. So, Seligman talks about um, the ABCs, and basically A is for adversity, B is for the beliefs about that adversity, and C is for the consequences of those beliefs. So the first step is to acknowledge um, different situations where you are being pessimi pessimistic about your business. Once you acknowledge those, you have to distract yourself and get yourself out of that funk. And then the next step is to dispute that pessimism and basically, this is none other than literally having a debate with yourself in your mind about your negative thoughts. So an example from the book is like, and I was talking to Simon about this last night, but like in terms of diet, um, I've always been 
like I'll, I'll try to eat clean and everything. And then if I have one little slip up, I'll be like, oh, it's the end of the world. I ruined it. I might as well binge tonight, you know, and then I'll take a few days off and just kind of go crazy and just pig out on it and everything and not work out. And it spirals out of control, right? I didn't even understand it, but that was the exact example he gave in the book. And that's like a perfect example of a pessimistic outlook. So sometimes it's not even obvious that you're being pessimistic about things that are thrown your way. Um, a different way to approach that is to acknowledge that, you know, hey, maybe I don't have to think like this. Maybe um, those nachos weren't the end of the world. You know, maybe I deserve a little treat since I've been doing so well for the past two weeks. And basically, if you go through this book, you're gonna learn how to use these ABCs. And I know it sounds kind of corny, but it will, I think, push you guys, um, give you the ability to keep pushing when things get tough in business. So rule number three is um, Steve's creed. Steve, there's a quote about Steve Jobs from uh, John Scully, Apple CEO, I think after Jobs. Um, what made Steve Jobs' methodology different from everyone else's is that he always believed the most important decisions you make are not the things you do, but the things you decide not to do. He's a minimalist. Next slide, Dan. So I don't know if you guys have seen that, that interview. If you haven't, Google uh, ain't nobody got time for that. But essentially this chick was on the news. They had an apartment fire or something like that. And she was talking about the smoke and saying that she got bronchitis. She's like, ain't nobody got time for that. And that's how you got to approach your business. So this is, of all the books I've read, the one thing, probably the most impactful on my business. You guys definitely got to pick that up. You got to go through it multiple times, take notes. And kind of the remainder of these slides are from that one thing. But essentially, one of the quotes that you need to remember is to go small, right? Ignore everything you could do and focus only on what you should do. Find what matters most. Do fewer things with more effect instead of more things with side effects. Success is sequential, not simultaneous. So instead of getting up and trying to answer emails and do Facebook and um, upload a YouTube video and make your next lead gen site and build influence, you gotta like ignore all of that stuff and realize you don't have time for that. You gotta find that one thing that matters most, that first domino. And every day when you wake up, you gotta knock, you gotta whack away at that first domino, tip that over, and that may tip over 100 dominoes behind it. So, go for it. Um, Gary Keller in The One Thing then goes on to talk about the six lies of success, right? So, number one, everything matters equally. And this, like I was just saying, it's like, we get up with no real game plan and we give just as much attention to email and Facebook as we do to building out influence sites, right? That's of course not how you should be approaching your day. There's only one or two things that matter, prospecting, ranking in Google, that's it. Everything else, if you would literally cut out 99% of the things you do and focus on getting sites, getting these sites ranked in Google and prospecting, going out and getting business to come to you, you're gonna be so much farther ahead 90 days from now. Number two, multitasking, um, so hard, so hard with the internet. The internet's like this beautiful vehicle that gives us all this opportunity to have these amazing lifestyle businesses to come to Vegas, make money passively, spend time with our friends and family, travel the world, all these great things. But it's also the ultimate, I don't know a better word for it, pardon my French, but cock block, right? It's the, it's the biggest productivity cock block. It keeps you from getting things done during the day. Um, you cannot multitask, you can do two things at once. I can walk and talk on the phone, but you cannot concentrate effectively on two things at once. So multitasking, studies have been done that show it eats up about 30% of your day. So one thing at a time, shut down all distractions. There's um, Simon or Hell or someone was talking about, there's apps you can get free apps that can like block certain parts of Facebook even, which are kind of cool. You can check out some of those things, whatever you need to do, but um, my own personal routine, I come down to the office in the morning and I try not to open up anything except for you know, my money-making lead generation sites and my influence sites, add content to those for about the first four hours of the day and then go to everything else. Um, next, a disciplined life. Sometimes we look at people who are successful and we think, oh, if I was only as disciplined as them, you know, if I was only had the discipline and work ethic of Dan, 
Um, what Gary Keller says in this book is that you have enough discipline as it is. Everyone's got about the same amount of discipline. It's how you harness that discipline and what habits you form. So basically you need to use what little discipline we all have and use it to form habits, the proper habits of your workday that are gonna take your business to the next level. Next, willpower is always on will call. That is false. Obviously you wanna think about willpower like um, the battery level on your cell phone. You know, you start off with a full bar every day and then as the day goes on, it wears out. So you gotta do what's, what's most important first thing in the morning. Um, next, a balanced life. This one is like with your personal life, with your kids, your significant other, um, you can't get too out of, out of balance with this. Like you'll never get time back. You never know when it's gonna be your time. Your kids are only young once. So you always wanna keep a level head and give your family the time that they deserve. Um, but in business, you have to get out of balance, right? You have to spend a disproportionate amount of time on your one thing and counterbalance. Let everything get messy in the background, you know? I let private messages in Facebook stack up. I let notifications, even of you guys, in the Facebook group stack up and then I batch it and I come to it, but I have to do what's most important first. Not that that's not important, but that's not gonna bring new business and serve my clients that I have. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, big is bad. A lot of us, because of the way we were raised, we, you know, we got this programming that big is bad. Um, you know, rich people are snotty, all of these things. But of course, if you truly believe that, you're gonna self-sabotage and not do what it takes to become six, seven figure earners. And that's not what we want. So the Lamborghini link, this is the focusing question from the one thing. This is the most important thing that you need to ask yourself at the start and throughout every single day. And the question goes like this, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary, right? For me, blogging, creating content, for Dan, sales. For all of you, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing depending on if you have a partner or not and if you're doing every step of the business. Rank in Google or prospect, that's basically all there is. Um, I believe it was in this same book. Uh, he tells a story about Jerry Seinfeld and someone approached him at a comedy club. It was an up and coming comedian and he's like, you know, Jerry, you know, you're so, you're one of the best comedians of our time. What's the secret to your success? And Jerry Seinfeld said, I practice my craft. Every day I sit down and I write jokes and I've done this for you know, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever it was. And he's like, I hang a big calendar on my wall and I write jokes every day. And when I write jokes, I put a big X for the day. And my goal is to keep that X going. And eventually I had this huge chain where there's just X's on every day and my goal is never to break the chain. So that's something I keep in mind. I try to blog, create content and build more influence sites every single day. I don't want to break that chain. As long as I keep doing that, I know that's the system that works. As long as I form that habit, I'm going to keep going upwards. Uh, Stephen King, one of the best, most proficient writers of our time. From Wikipedia, Stephen King's formula for learning to write well is read and write four to six hours a day. If you cannot find time for that, you cannot expect to be a good writer. He sets out each day with a quota of 2,000 words and will not stop writing until that is met a lot of job killers i think what separates you know those who are posting the testimonials and those who are not is the ones who are they're practicing their craft four to six hours a day at a minimum right a lot of people try to blog try to create lead gen sites try to rank in google and they're giving it 30 minutes and then they're spending an hour on youtube and three hours on facebook and stuff like that that's okay, but if you're not actually pulling up the sleeves and practicing the craft, or if you're not putting in reps, you can only expect to get so far. Productivity pocket pickers, all right? So these are the things, once you kind of understand all this, you decide what your one thing is, um, you kind of have your routine in place and you try to start living this way, these are the things that are gonna take you off track. Number one, not being able to say no. I mean, it will say no to text messages, phone calls, uh, Facebook notifications, private messages, emails, um, gurus emailing you their latest webinar, their latest pitch, the new software, the new shiny thing. If you cannot say no to that and block that stuff out, you're going to struggle. Number two, fearing chaos. So we talked about how uh, 
you know, balance is essentially a lie of success and you need to be imbalanced and you need to counterbalance and spend a disproportionate amount of time on your one thing. The trouble is as you do that, you're gonna feel guilty because it is gonna get messy um, in the areas of all those things that you're neglecting and you have to learn to be okay with that. Number three, poor health habits. This is something I struggled with the first couple years. I was just so focused on working all day, every day. Um, I wasn't working out, I wasn't eating right. I showered like once every two, three days. Um, and you just start feeling crappy, you get run down, your brain doesn't function at, at as high of a level as it could, and then your work suffers as a result. Number four, environment that doesn't support your goals. The big thing here, not only like your workspace, your office, and the distractions that you do or do not have, but your friends, your family, people who are interrupting you throughout the day, people who are not supporting you. It's good to see so many spouses and significant others here today because you have to have that social support. And if you don't, it's, it's almost impossible to make this work. So you have to demand it. Um, be more transparent with your significant other. Sit down, talk about it, express your concerns, get it out there. Because if they're, if they're being negative about what you're trying to do, it's gonna, it's gonna eat away at your productivity. All right, so this is supposed to be Dan 40 years from now on a wife beater, but. Um, <laughs> So let's recap quick. The three cruel rules to becoming an internet millionaire. Once you have the system, of course, which I believe all of you guys do. Number one, know yourself. You can remember that by thinking Zoolander Zag, right? That'll help you remember that. Number two, be more optimistic in the way you think, the, the adversity that you get dealt with as you, you know, the limo owner doesn't close sales. This guy texted you something mean. Um, this site's being stubborn and won't rank in Google. You have to learn to, um, find the opportunity in every sort of adversity and misfortune that comes your way. So go through managing oneself, step number one. Go through learn optimism, step number two. Presidential promises, how you heard that. Presidents always, always optimistic, even to the point of lying. Um, but if you lie to yourself about your business, you have to ask, like, what's the worst that can happen? Is that really that bad of a thing if you try to spin something negative into a positive? Is that really that bad of a lie to tell. I don't believe it is. Number three, uh, minimalism slash the one thing. So the one thing by Gary Keller, go through that book, take notes. I think, I think, like I said, you know, once you get the system and you believe in it and you have the faith in it, that's all there is to it. Do your one thing, do your primary money-making tasks every single day. And we'll be talking about prospecting and a lot of, I can come around and look at you guys' influence sites as we go through this. Um, so the formula, the three cruel rules plus the job killing system equals potentially someday with enough work, enough repetition, million dollar business. All right, so now that you know all this, of course, I want you to pinky promise me that you're actually gonna apply this stuff and learn it. Um, number one, you have to believe in all this stuff. And I know some of the mindset stuff, it's not all that sexy. We like the techniques and the loopholes and the systems and the software and stuff like that. But I'm telling you guys, I don't even study internet marketing anymore. I, all I do is study, study mindset, study people like outside of internet marketing because I know I have the system. Um, I'm just gonna keep rinsing and repeating it for the rest of my life. I'm not gonna try to l learn some new, you know, money chasing thing online. So you have to believe in it, you have to have faith. Number two, you have to use it daily. You have to ask yourself that focusing question over and over and over. If you find yourself sitting in front of the computer and time's ticking by, you're not really doing anything, What's the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? Number three, remember the three Ps, purpose, priority, productivity, time block to get the most out of your day. Like I said, I've read a lot of books on this. I practice it myself the past few months. I'm telling you, when I go down and I spend four hours in the morning uninterrupted and do my one thing and then go and get on Facebook and social media and talk to Dan and let him blow up my phone. Um, my days are so much better and I, we, we move our business forward. Um, number five, perseverance pays. The equal odds rule, which is basically you know, geniuses, um, high level entrepreneurs. The more work you put out, the better off you're gonna be. Everything has approximately an equal chance of being a home run. If you put out one site, you have to cross your fingers and hope that one site's a grand slam. If it's not, you sit around and you, know, you start becoming pessimistic. If you put out 10 sites a month, 15 sites a month, 20 sites a month, if you prospect um, 
10, 15, 20 times per day, send out screencast videos and some of the things we're gonna cover later, every, every piece of content, legion site, prospecting that you do has an equal chance of bringing you in business, potentially a lot of business, potentially a great business owner who's gonna pay you two, three, four K per month, plus refer you five of his local business owner buddies. Um, number six, routines make you rich, okay? So start structuring your day, I encourage all of you to become morning people, go to bed a little bit earlier, cut out some of the reality TV, get up at five or six, sit down for four hours, bang it out, you're gonna make more money, I promise you. You always wanna keep in mind, minimize regrets, right? And this is something that really drives me. It's like, in this book, he also talks about the top regrets in those 85 or older. Um, and these are the top four. Number one, I wish I would have been happier. Number two, I wish I would have kept in touch with old friends. Number three, I wish I would have expressed my feelings better. And number four, I wish I would have lived my life for me, not others. And I believe what we're teaching you in job killing, and if you practice it the way we encourage you to, and push forward every single day, um, in one to two years, you're gonna be able to satisfy and minimize or eliminate all four of these. You know, number three, I don't know if it really directly helps with how you express your feelings, but I can tell you as you make more money, you're gonna become more confident, you're gonna become more comfortable in your own skin, and you probably are gonna be able to um, do that as well. Inactions are what plague us the most. You're not gonna be on your deathbed someday looking back and going, oh man, I'm really bummed, I can't believe I did that. You're gonna be the biggest regrets, the things that are gonna weigh on you the most are the things that you never did. You know, I never built that business to 10K per month. I never got out of my day job, so something to keep in mind. And lastly, live your life today so that the 85-year-old you can say, I'm glad I did and not I wish I had. So that's it for this opening kickoff. Hopefully that kind of gives you guys the right mindset to better understand and incorporate some of the techniques we're going to be going through the rest of the day. Appreciate you guys making it out. Thank you.